Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand as usual and it is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Huge Monster Monday. So if you're on the mentorship list, you're going to get an email and chances are you've already gotten it if you're watching this that Mike Robertson and I are doing a Q&A at 3 p.m. for uh, the people that are on the iFastU list. So you're going to get notified for that. Um, very exciting. This is this is at no charge to you for today. And then um, it's going to be 100 people max. So it's going to be first come, first serve. So hopefully we'll see you there for that. 3 p.m. Eastern time. Me and my buddy Mike Robertson. Okay. So we got a bunch of Q&A backups to get through. So we're going to knock a couple out this morning if it's okay by you. First one comes from Austin. Austin says, I have a question about a video you posted a couple months ago on improving hip internal rotation with the toe touch video. You mentioned that using dorsiflexion to achieve sacral nutation uh, and maintain mid to max propulsion. <clears throat> you also mentioned plantar flexion. Putting the individual in an early propulsive phase, can you talk me through how dorsiflexion and plantar flexion influences the sacral position? Absolutely. So I'm going to bring in a special guest. This is my classic Air Jordan that I got from uh, my good, good buddy Jim Ferris. Um, got him in the shield colors, as everybody should. Anyway, so we're going to use this as a representation of the foot as it moves through uh, the gait cycle. And so when we look at the, the foot in its, in its approach position, it's going to land in a supinated position heel first. So first heel contact is going to be lateral. So I've got a supinated foot position, which is actually external rotation. So external rotation is inhalation expansion, which puts the sacrum in a counter nutated position just prior to ground contact. As I make contact, I have to start propelling, otherwise I'd collapse into the ground. But this is early propulsion. So now as the foot comes to flat, the body is still behind the foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a leg for a sec. Okay. So as I land, I hit the heel, I go into plantar flexion, but the body is still back and behind. So this is counter mutation. This is inhalation. This is ER. As I move towards pronation. Okay. So I'm bringing the medial heel into contact with the ground so I can pronate. That's where I'm going to start to reach my mid and max propulsive strategies. Okay. So as I hit the ground and I come over top of the foot, and as the body comes over the foot, I have to create a, a stable pelvic orientation above the foot. So now let's grab the pelvis and now we can actually see. So as I land, I'm here. As I'm stepping over, I bring the hip towards zero degrees of, of what we would call hip extension. But this is where I'm going to get a concentric orientation of the pelvic diaphragm. And so that's going to create the nutated position of the sacrum. So now I have pronation down below. I've got internal rotation at the hip. I've got a concentric pelvic diaphragm and I got a nutated sacrum. So that's how we can relate the plantar flexion and, and dorsiflexion to the sacral position. So when I'm plantar flex, which is actually supination, ER, inhalation, I'm going to be counter nutated. As I'm pronated, I'm going to be IR, concentric pelvic diaphragm, nutation of the sacrum. So hopefully that will answer your question, Austin. And if it doesn't, please ask me another one. Okay. Question number two from Matt. And Matt asks, I know you have to work on knee valgus in athletes, and to what degree is it not something to worry about because it potentially helps produce power? I was wondering where you could find more info to read about it. I'm not sure that you're going to read a whole lot about um, using the, a valgus, if you will, um, to, as far as like when it's beneficial, how much to use, and, and, and how you're going to make that, that judgment as to whether you're being effective with it. But let's just talk through what knee valgus really is because it doesn't really exist. There is no frontal plane. Um, frontal plane is a visual representation for you and I to have a discussion. What the reality is, is what we're looking at. I'm going to bring this up close. What we're looking at with a knee valgus is actually a rotation in the knee, right? So, so what we have is we have a femur and a, and a tibia that are in, in relative rotation. So this would be defined by the tibia under most circumstances would be tibiofemoral external rotation. And so what we have is an internally rotated femur on top of the tibia. And what that does is that produces what people will typically identify as, as that, it, it has the appearance of a frontal plane position of, of knee valgus. 
Now, under certain circumstances, that's gonna be very, very useful. So you are absolutely correct that when we are producing power, when we are at our maximum propulsion, we're probably gonna be approximating that position to some degree because it is a, 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 an element of propulsion. However, there's people that walk around like that because of their physical structures and because of their idiosyncratic physics and the way that they deal with gravity, they actually live in that position. And so what happens is that they'll eventually give up the, the opposing rotation. So we have tibial femoral ER, we have tibial, tibial femoral IR, and what we wanna make sure is that our athletes have access to both of those because that would represent our ability to, to move through a full excursion of knee range of motion. So as you would, uh, perform, say, the traditional knee extension activity, you'll get tibial femoral ER. As you perform the traditional knee flexion, you would get tibial femoral IR. And so to have full knee excursion, we have to have those rotations available to us. And so, uh, Matt, what I would say is, is, is you, you want to make sure that you can identify whether your athlete has given up one of those, those elements of, of tibial femoral rotation. That would be something I would say that would put you at risk because it does compromise the full excursion of knee range of motion. Um, that would be my first, first priority. Secondly is, once again, is as they move through their maximum propulsive phase, are they capturing this knee position and then can they reverse it as they push out of it? So at, at early and late propulsive phases, I wanna recapture the, the tibiofemoral position um, of ER, and as I move through that, that max propulsive phase, I wanna make sure that I got tibiofemoral IR um, available to me. So once again, um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, if it's not, then again, please ask another question. You guys have a terrific Monday, and uh, we will talk later this week. See ya.